All right, having discussed the nature and scope of uh, philosophy, let us proceed to the subdisciplines. They are typically considered to be uh, sub philosophy or the branches of philosophy. And we will be taking this uh, table or uh, how do we call this? This uh, visual aid, at least from uh, Derek McAllister, will be borrowing this one for this course. And uh, before that, as you remembered last time, the, there is much debate even among philosophers about the nature and scope of philosophy, right? So the same is true for this taxonomy, right? This, or in other words, this way of dividing the subdisciplines under uh, philosophy. There's still much debate about them. So having said that, let us inquire into the three main subdisciplines or branches of philosophy. By the way, last time I talked about uh, the birth of philosophy, right? Uh, instead of uh, talking about that at this moment, let us postpone our discussion of that in the next week. Okay, so as of the moment, we'll immediately proceed to this taxonomy of philosophy. So there are three main branches of philosophy. First, we have a metaphysics. Second, we have epistemology, and then we have axiology. So basically, metaphysics is uh, the study of reality. That is the basic uh, uh, definition of it. It studies uh, reality, although some other disciplines still study reality or being. Metaphysics studies being or reality as reality. Right? In other words, unlike uh, mathematics, which studies uh, reality or being as quantifiable okay, or as capable of quantification. Now, there are still some uh, aspects of reality that cannot be quantified, right? So. How about those? What's our field studies those? Uh, and that would be uh, metaphysics, right? As I might notice, uh, metaphysics is quite uh, broad, right? But it also it is also uh, quite deeper than the rest of the disciplines because it studies being in its uh, deepest causes, for example, or conditions, etc. So there's a and that is ontology, right? Ontology is the study of being. Some would draw a hard and fast distinction between metaphysics and epistemology, but we would uh, postpone discussion on that and look about that uh, elsewhere. But, uh, basically, at least in this course, we'll be using both terms, metaphysics and ontology, in roughly the same way. We also have, uh, so what are the questions that are typically, or topics that are typically discussed under uh, metaphysics? We have causation, for example, because there are different views about causation. Uh, for example, Aristotle thinks that uh, there's a real uh, intrinsic connection between cause and effect, right? You cannot separate the two. However, Hume disagreed. For Hume, uh, cause and effect are merely uh, loose and separate, right? You can separate the two. They're loose, unlike uh, the view of Aristotle, which uh, is that cause and effect are not loose, but they are really bound up together. Kant tries to salvage causality from Hume, but his solution is itself a critique by many Aristotelians because uh, for Kant, uh, causality is, yes, necessary, it is universal, however, it is only uh, imminent to us. So the law of causality is intrinsic or imminent to the human being, and it is not about what the world in itself is because uh, Kant has. Uh, some skepticism about whether we could really know reality in itself, right? Independent of uh, human knowing. So we have questions about time, right? So uh, which is more fundamental, position or time? Right? Which is the condition of uh, possibility for the other? Position or time? So, what is the correct view of time? We have the A theory of time, we have the B theory of time. It's typically presentist, according to which there's a, a past, present, and future are really describing real features of the world. Right? And uh, the B theory of time instead is that uh, past, present, and future is quite, uh, or these terms are quite relative to the observer because there's only one continuum of time 
and past, present, and future are equally real. Unlike the A theory of time, which tends to view the past and the future as unreal, and only the present is real. So that's why it's typically dis uh, described as present. Right? But there's still many more nuances under each, but we have to discuss that uh, at some other point of time. So, still under metaphysics would be questions about free will. Do we really have free will? What is the nature of free will? We also discuss under metaphysics uh, the status of universals in particulars, right? Universals, uh, according to one definition of it, would be uh, notions that uh, are applicable not only to one uh, being in the world, but to many beings in the world. For example, the, univer uh, the, the concept or the notion of cat is a universal because, because it is uh, applicable. It is uh, it is expected to be applied to various uh, instances of the genus or at least, no not genus but the species cat right there are many individuals of it. so it is a universal so the word cat is a universal because it is uh, generalizable to a various set of uh, realities or beings so what is the status of these of these universals does it uh, is it something only imminent to us right? Is catness something only in the human mind, or or does it something in the world correspond to such a uh, mental categorization? Right? For Aristotle, uh, there's a real nature of catness right? that corresponds to our uh, universal cat. So, according to nominalism, right? Or uh, according to nominalism, no. There's nothing in the world that uh, is the ground or the basis for our uh, view of universals, right? There's no in or ob there's no objective nature that these universals correspond to. Okay, so let us talk about negative ontology, right? Because it is also under a metaphysics. What is the ontological status of holes, right? of negative facts etc so or for example evil in the case of uh, Augustine because Augustine for example has the privation theory of evil right he thinks that uh, although evil is real it is not a substance right it is not capable of existing on itself instead it is a lack of something that ought to be there right it is real it is a real lack however it is not, it's not it is not a positive reality in itself so these are under metaphysics uh, also possible worlds right what is the level of concreteness that we can attribute to possible worlds right when we think of a uh, possible world we're talking about possible ways the world could have been right? possible worlds separate worlds that really have concrete reality on their own or are they just inside the mind but if they're just inside the mind how do they hook up with reality right so that's uh, a, a, an important question in metaphysics although this could also be tackled under epistemology so what are the conditions for something to be identical to itself right so this is it's a question under identity so for example uh, there's no self according to you right there's only a bundle of experiences that we tie together which we call the self so this is similar to the view of buddha right so for example uh paulo bolanias in his book uh very interestingly uh, draws connections between buddha and hume i think on this one on the view that there is no self so what is identity for individuals things that are non-human and for the human being so this by the way these are distinct questions so these uh, themes would be discussed under the sub-discipline of uh, metaphysics. Now we have philosophy of religion. But before we talk about philosophy of religion, let's uh, talk about epistemology first. So the second main sub-field of philosophy would be epistemology, right? It is the study of episteme, right? Episteme means knowledge. So the study of knowledge is uh, epistemology. So questions that are typically cat categorized under it would be, uh, what is knowledge? What does it mean to know? Right. So, of something to be knowledge would be 
is that uh, is the classical view that uh, it has to be first a belief, right? You really believe it. And then you have it has to be true. So what you believe in must be true to be properly called knowledge, and then it has to be justified. Now, uh, so in other words, knowledge is not uh, something is knowledge if uh, it is a justified true belief. Now, uh, there are many nuances about there are many nuances regarding this because uh, for example you have Gettier's cases which yeah. seem to force us to force us to question this uh, categorization of the conditions of possibility or oh, sorry of the conditions for something to be to knowledge so that is discussed under epistemology so there are many views on what it means to know yeah. we'll talk about that at yeah. some other point there are some views also regarding how I know right also what counts as evidence right what uh, weight should we give to certain types of evidence so this is under uh, epistemology now uh, let us talk about a subfield called uh, philosophy of religion which uh, draws on both metaphysics and epistemology later on we'll talk about philosophy of mind because I skipped that uh, unintentionally uh, philosophy of religion answers questions such as the existence uh, of God does God exist is there an afterlife is religious belief irrational so these are really fascinating questions but we have to postpone our discussion of that some other time philosophy of mind is uh, mainly under metaphysics for example it asks does the soul exist right what is a person so uh, these are metaphysical questions but it is often categorized under a different discipline called philosophy of mind philosophy of mind so regarding philosophy of religion it uh, not only in metaphysics but also in epistemology for example when we ask the question is religious belief irrational irrational right because uh, it searches for it, it uh, this raising this question necessitates us to ask what standards do we have for classifying a certain a certain belief as rational and irrational right this is under epistemology right so uh, by the way philosophy of religion does not only limit itself to metaphysics and epistemology, it also draws from axiology. So, uh, there's uh, different, I think this is a different field, but those, some would contest that, under philosophy of religion, which is called axiology of religion, because uh, it focuses on, is the question, is religious belief worth having? What particular strands of religious belief are worth having? Right. So, the question of what is worth having, what is the value of something, it's axios is uh, under the third branch of philosophy which is axiology so uh, I would disagree with McAllister a bit here when he only limits uh, the sources of philosophy of religion to metaphysics and epistemology because I would argue that it includes axiology so so those are uh, the rough descriptions of philosophy with axiology we already talked about this for a bit so unlike metaphysics which is the study of reality and epistemology which is the study of knowledge axiology is the study of axios which is which means value or worth so there are three main uh, disciplines under this first we have ethics next we have political philosophy and then aesthetics first ethics what makes an action person life etc good so there are different views about this so we can talk about uh, the ethics of Aristotle, the ethics of Aquinas, the ethics of John Stuart Mill, which is quite utilitarian, the ethics of Kant, which focuses on the categorical imperative, the ethics of uh, many more thinkers. We have to postpone discussion about that. Uh, another question under ethics would be the objectivity, right, or the relativity of. Uh, more uh, statements about morality right? is it really objectively true that abortion is wrong right? or is that is that just uh, an outdated view which we should re uh, already reject today because it's already it's already 2022 so this uh, question is under ethics so we have political philosophy for example which asks what makes a state good right? and also under this for example is the Eichmann problem right? because uh, what is the Eichmann problem? Basically, this uh, problem uh, emerged out of somebody under the Nazi regime 
uh, who just of, uh, obeys the commands of the Nazi regime because the Nazi regime was the state at that time, was the legitimate uh, state at that time. So the question arises, should we blindly follow the commands of the state or should we rebel when necessary when uh, such uh, state forces us to do something that violates our conscience, right? that forces us to violate basic human rights of a certain human beings. So this is under political philosophy. So uh, we also have aesthetics, which is the, th the study of, uh, of, uh, the, of beauty. Right? What is beautiful? And is beauty really objective? Or is it merely in the eye of the beholder, which is subjective? So Aquinas, for example, thinks, at least according to some interpreters, like uh, Thomas Joseph White, the Dominican, uh, at least for Aquinas, beauty is convertible with the other transcendentals because uh, for Aquinas, beauty is a transcendental, at least according to this stream of interpretation that is. And that means that it is, uh, it is a term that leaps any particular categorization or any limited categorization because it is predicable. You can predicate beauty to everything, to the set of all things, to each reality under the set of all realities just like truth and goodness right? and because for Aquinas truth, goodness and beauty these main transcendentals are convertible to each other then because objectivity and goodness have some objectivity in them then beauty according to Aquinas must have uh, some objectivity in it as well right but uh, according to the common view beauty is in the eye of the beholder so which one is correct so this is under aesthetics now uh, there are many questions that, have, uh, that are uh, drawing on both epistemology and axiology. For example, we have applied epistemology, we have meta-ethics, we have applied ethics, and there is a huge literature on different ethical theories. <laughs> but we have to postpone discussion of that at some other time. Now, this taxonomy consciously uh, leaves out many other disciplines that are related to uh, philosophy for example uh, logic logic for example is one of the fields that are typically categorized under philosophy but this uh, taxonomy does not show that because uh, McAllister says that uh, he sees logic uh, mo mostly as a technical discipline it is a tool of philosophy rather than a distinct uh, field under philosophy itself right because uh, uh, logic is uh, basically the study of what counts as a uh, valid inference right that means uh, inference is the view uh, inference is the action of the mind of uh, knowing the truth of another or a new proposition based on earlier ones that we already know so it is about expanding our field of knowledge based on specific uh, set a specific set of rules of inference right? or rules of, rules of logic so that's it. Uh, that is not included here because it is a tool rather than a distinct discipline under philosophy. So notice that uh, logic is very relevant in all fields of philosophy because all fields of philosophy uh, engage in arguments, right? And it is logic that we use to judge right, the soundness of these arguments. We also have a uh, philosophy of language which analyzes the terms that we use in each of these disciplines and we also have finally uh, rhetoric right which uh, studies uh, how do we convince somebody <laughs> and this uh, is really help uh, this is an important tool for at least some or even even all of uh, the philosophers that we would be studying this also excludes specific uh, branches of philosophy which focus on one specialization. For example, we have a philosophy of history, we have philosophy of science, we have philosophy of law, philosophy of education, philosophy of etc. etc. So these uh, philosophy of mathematics, for example, these uh, subfields emerge when somebody uh, who studies such uh, starts to doubt or starts to question the very foundations, the most basic concepts really assumed in such a uh, discipline for example uh, what really counts as historical knowledge right so is there a stream or is there determinism in history 
So this is a question in philosophy of history. In philosophy of education, for example, uh, is it uh, right? It is, is it good to just treat education as just the transfer of knowledge from one human being, teacher, to another? Or does that violate uh, how active and not really passive the human learner really is? So uh, this notice is uh, questioning the very foundations of uh, education itself because basically one of the main practices in education at least in the past or even still today is uh, quite is uh, sometimes called the banking theory, uh, banking theory of education wherein uh, knowledge is merely transferred like money from the bank to the wallet of uh, somebody so uh, which is a learner so we have we have that for philosophy of education now we also have a philosophy of mathematics for example which uh, uh, inquires into the, the basic axioms of mathematics right we have philosophy of law etc et so philosophy of man etc so notice also that all this leaves out uh, disciplines that are already separate from philosophy so for example chemistry all these are actually emergent from philosophy they are once under philosophy right specifically perhaps under metaphysics but uh, eventually uh, philosophy became to them like a mother discipline because they branched out and they totally separated themselves from philosophy although you can still have philosophy of chemistry you can still have philosophy of physics right but uh, uh, properly speaking these are already distinct disciplines of, of from philosophy although historically they trace their origin from philosophy right I think that's it for the taxonomy of philosophy next time we will talk about some reasons why uh, philosophy is valuable so what the value of philosophy is so that would be it thank you